The chairman of the Banyo Lending Cluster, Seku Samosa, spoke about the dynamism of the cluster created in 2016 to reduce the load on the Lamindaranka Cluster and the regular updates they carried out to ensure that the rules governing the activities of the body are fit for purpose. We had capacity building, series of capacity building, and this capacity building was very helpful in terms of professional development of our members. I can fully remember we conducted by the advice of the Secretary General, if you look at our minutes, we conducted, successfully conducted over more than three capacity building training programs for members within the cluster. And this particular training is geared towards capacitizing our members in general order, in financial instruction, professional ethics, and code of conduct for civil service. The cluster monitor, Jokin Jaju, stated that all the activities of the different components that make up the cluster have been harmonized, adding the retreat has the potential to ensure that the binding cluster meets minimum basic standards. Jaju also noted that the gathering of representatives of schools that make up the cluster has the potential to solidify professional bonds and advance their shared goals. This is geared towards enhancing that cohesion, that socialization, that solidarity amongst us as a cluster. This is like a synergy, it's like a bond that will enable us to be unified so as to achieve our goals as a cluster. And this will be a hallmark so that we can stand tall to be an exceptional cluster within the region. Prior to his presentation, which centered on the national curriculum and new design syllabus, the Director of Curriculum, Regional Education Directorate 2, Modu Jeng, commended the Banyan Leading Cluster for, in his words, being innovative and for thinking outside of the box. Jeng went on to say teachers mold students through the knowledge they impart on them and should therefore be innovative. And I think it's time for Africa, and not only, not only the Gambia, to begin to see how we can do things differently. We inherited a colonial education system, which was not interested to develop you. They were interested to continue to utilize you as a nation, so that your resources, your energies, can always be tapped by the colonial master for their interests. So those people are not interested in your personal development and capacity development or human development that will make you independent. We are politically independent, but we are not economically independent. We are always borrowing. We are always looking for grants. We are looking always for aid. Do we have to continue that way as a country? No. Jeng, however, pointed out that the task of molding the young ones rests squarely on three institutions, the school, religion, and the family. During the course of the day, delegates will delve into topical issues like the role of teachers in nation building, the pension scheme, among others. Francis Mendy, GRTS.